DerbyCon. <laughs> Feels good to be here. Um, thank you all for, for coming to my TED Talk, uh, How to Tell the Sea Level Their Baby is Ugly, um, because it probably is. So I don't know if any of you read the pamphlet or you came here blind or, or what you're expecting to see, but hopefully you get some of it. If, uh, if not, I hope you brought something to drink. Um, so I'll go ahead and get into this. Um, who am I? Oh, there's supposed to be a picture there. Is there a picture there? Oh, this might go poorly. Um, <laughs> Let me try something real quick. Come on. No? Aha. Hey. That's me. Um, so who am I? Uh, I dox myself in the program. My name is Heather Smith. I go by Lit Moose most of the time, just Moose. Um, if I introduce you and I don't introduce myself as Heather, it's not because I'm like weird about my name. It's just because I've gone by Moose for like years. I'm a DFIR dumpster diver. Um, I see all the things. Um, I was formerly a project manager um, and a data analyst. Um, so I've had a lot of experience trying to convince management to do things that they didn't want to do. Um, look at logs all day. Uh, most of my time is uh, report writing. That's a lot of fun. Um, not going to be talking too much about that. Uh, I scream into the void. Uh, I'm a pretty benevolent contractor. Uh, I'm white hat. Um, and I've seen some shit. Um, because I'm a contractor, I might have seen your shit. All right. So, fact, most babies are ugly. I like this one. All right, so your baby might be ugly if MFA isn't enabled and you YOLO your password management. So many times I have seen this. Um, in fact, a, a buddy in the Dallas group said the other day that he saw uh, Trello as a password manager the other day. So that's fun. Um, your baby might be ugly if your Mac environment is doubling as your user's iTunes library. Guys, if we're not monitoring this, insider threat is just like, oh yeah, we're going to have all the sensitive documents created on this user's Mac, and they're just going to sync it to home. And if they go away, so does all of those, you know, files with them. Um, your baby might be ugly if personal email is accessible and not monitored. I say two things as a caveat because I know this is a pain point for a lot of us. We get fish all the time. Personal email is enabled in the environment. They have to use it because some executive needs it. That's all well and fine. If you're not monitoring it, though, like, ugh, shame on you. Um, so your baby might be ugly if you only are monitoring events on the endpoints. This is the hill that I die on. Um, I am super big into the defense in depth. I hear every company say, you know, we have the silver bullet. No, you don't. No. Um, so, uh, yeah, don't, don't do that. Um, your baby might be ugly if you roll your own cryptography. There it is. Uh, I have only met one person in my life who I think could probably roll his own cryptography and be okay. And he is sitting in the front row and he goes by Ridgeback and he's right there. And when I told him this, he laughed at me and said, fuck no. Um, <laughs> so don't do it. Your baby might be ugly if you find five ennies on a firewall. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. Uh, this one hurts. Uh, so I found five ennies on a firewall. I found five ennies on a firewall to mission critical systems. And when I asked why that any source and any destination was not enough to make it work, they were like, well, we thought it, that it might exclude some users, and we didn't want any downtime. So we did any user, and I said, yeah, there's, there's, there's two more any's there. And they're like, well, yeah, we have a lot of services, so, you know, any of them will do. Okay, so you put an any there. And then, uh, and I was like, okay, so, so any service, and I was like, and, and, and then that leaves one more. And they were like, yeah, any application. So we didn't know the difference between service and application. Ladies and gentlemen, Five bennies on a firewall. This is just a bad day. All right, so uh, how do we communicate these things to a C-level to make sure that it gets changed effectively? Um, guys, if this was my boss, I would never quit. Um, <laughs> so C-level is typically human. Um, 
they're just like we are, uh, except they go to many, many more meetings. Hopefully. Uh, I hope you don't go to that many meetings. Um, they're constrained by time. Um, so a lot of what I found in working with them is uh, if you're not able to start out with the meat and potatoes of something, and sorry, vegetarians, uh, I'm, I'm still living in Dallas, so I use their analogies. Um, if you're not able to get to that, that chunk of exactly what you want in a very succinct way, they're going to be frustrated. Uh, you know, they, they, they just don't have time for you or for me or anybody else. They don't even have time for themselves. Um, they're very sick of meetings. So bullet points of paragraphs. Um, they're very focused on the CIA triad because they've had to drink that Kool-Aid of how do I effectively tell um, the people that work laterally to me because you're not just working with a CISO. You're also having to work with a CISO who then has to work with his whole suite or, or her whole suite or anybody above them to where if it's publicly traded, what are you communicating? Um, you know, there are non-technical people everywhere that have to be communicated to. So how do they, how do they communicate that? Um, and it's in um, dollar amounts and it's in, you know, what's happening to our environment. So keeping in mind where they stand and what they care about, um, that's kind of where I found the sweet spot is if you can tie it back into that um, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Uh, you can probably get stuff done and just make it a horror story. Um, and then because they work with so many non-technical people on the other side of the fence, uh, maybe not you, um, if you are able to translate whatever you found two ways succinctly, both technical and non-technical, they'll probably take it and use it because now they only have to copy and paste. Um, so where are my red teamers at? Oh my god, really? That's it? Or are you shy? Uh, so I've got the front row. Uh, so red team, I'll just talk to you. Uh, and a few scattered, sorry. Uh, so I've, I've seen red teamers have the most difficult time with this, uh, communicating to the sea level why they should be breaking their shit. Um, it's a very difficult, like, kind of line to, to, to toe. And so having a top 10 list and coming in with questions in mind of what they care about most um, and scoping around that, even if you know and you find something that is completely left field because it's an unknown unknown, they don't know about it, you didn't know it existed. Um, if you have 10 things, generally speaking, use your social engineering skills, tie it back into that top 10 and have them like affirm in writing that those are the things that are most important to them. Um, and so have that, that communication off, off the bat. Um, always have a scope going in. Uh, make sure that they've agreed to it. Uh, if you don't, uh, they'll come back and say, I didn't say that. Uh, even if they did say it, they'll say, I didn't say that. Um, it happens. They forget. Uh, writing is best. Um, including screenshots, even if they're overtly technical. Um, this is something that uh, I learned the hard way um, in working with some sea levels because it was frowned upon to be too technical, too fast. Uh, and really what that meant was language. And they seemed to love the code. Um, so if you have a picture, even if they'll never understand it, and I'm not saying that sea levels come from, you know, areas that are non-technical, it's not that. Um, but nobody can be an expert in all the things. So just assume that maybe they don't know exactly what you've done in your screenshot, but include it anyways because it shows your value. You're doing something that they couldn't do or that nobody else on the team is doing. Um, and it's kind of the proof in the pudding of here is a picture that you don't have to analyze, and here is the non-technical language under it. Um, and so those captions and that non-technical language should answer who, what, how, and why. And it's in business speak. So um, as, as basic as you can make it, uh, you know, uh, somebody came over and they, they popped our domain controller, and now all of the users are basically not necessarily our users. Um, you know, as, as simple as possible of, to, to get your point across. Um, teamwork makes the dream work. Where are my blue teamers? Ah, okay. This makes sense. Um, yeah, I do DFIR. I probably should have said this talk was for everybody, but um, love you guys. Um, so red team should love blue team. Blue team, I definitely love my red team. Um, Working together to derive holistic solutions is where I've seen most C-levels sign off quicker um, because you're mitigating any gap 
in a whole solution of, you know, we've proven that the attack was either successful or unsuccessful, and we've proven where the blue team can or can't see something. And so doing those peer attack and defense workshops and, and going through your own environment and trying to see end to end, and even pulling in uh, your networking team, they don't even have to be security, um, and getting people involved. Um, the more people you have involved and the more resources you have involved, probably the stronger your argument's gonna be. Um, when you do this, uh, learn from my fail, um, have everybody, and I mean everybody, uh, timestamp in UTC. <laughs> Everything that they do. <laughs> like, and don't leave it up to assumption that, oh, that's just what everybody does. Don't do that. Uh, Timestamp everything in UTC um, and, and make sure that they match up at the end because then you can do an easy timeline and you're not doing more work. Um, and that's really that, that teamwork is how you're finding the unknown unknowns. Um, so how do you translate this to your C-levels? Um, this can be kind of difficult because this is, again, much more technical like workshop that you're doing with, with your experts in the field. Um, so. Literally, I boil it down to, if attack is successful, here's what you need to know. What is the average time to mitigate it? Why do we care about this? Um, it goes back to that CIA triad of, is there downtime? Are things available? What's going on? You know, uh, is, is it impacting anything? It's, it's doing that kind of impact analysis. Um, and then, where are my resources? If my resources are pulled in on this, how much money am I spending on each head? And are, are there enough of them to get it done? You know, and giving them more of that of, listen, if this attack is actually successful, we're not, we're not prepared for it because X, Y, Z. Or we are prepared for it, but you're about to spend a lot of money. Um, and so if attack isn't successful, what is in place stopping it? What have you already spent money on? Uh, what is our, what does our stock look like? What are, what are we doing right? Um, and making sure that you're also uh, reporting those in a good way because generally speaking, you can probably say if attack was successful, this is your cost. If we stop it, here's this little number that is basically negligible in comparison. Um, and I know you all have heard the average cost of, of a breach is like something in the, the, the 7.4 million now. I don't know. I didn't see the, the latest statistic. I didn't look it up. I'm a bad presenter. Um, so. Uh, teamwork makes the dream work part two. Um, you can do all of this and you can say all of this uh, until the cows come home. I can't tell you how many emails I've written where I have it bold at the very top. I might highlight it in yellow, exactly what I want done. If it doesn't have a picture, it doesn't fly with some people. I'm not saying all of them, um, but pictures really make things stick out. And so uh, I do this with memes. Uh, I am not recommending doing this at home. Uh, know your sea level. If they have a sense of humor, this might work. If they don't, um, I actually what I do recommend is doing graphs and screenshots and tables um, and taking anything you're saying uh, that's a little bit uh, lengthier in an executive summary. And when I say lengthier, it could even be as short as two sentences. Still having a graph or a chart to visualize that um, will drive the point home. So it's like when you're in grade school and you're writing an essay and they say, start out with three things that you're going to talk about in the body. Conclude with three things that you talked about in the body. You're kind of doing that and supplementing with pictures and tables. Um, and I've seen a lot less pushback when you do that work up front. Um, and it takes less time than the back and forth of arguing, usually to say, you know, well, why do I care about this? Which is what a, a, a former C-level used to say all the time is, tell me why I care. Um, <clears throat> executive summaries. Um, you really want to boil it down to, uh, if, you're, if you're doing something that's proactive, have your hypothesis in there. Even if you're doing an IR, um, having hypo hypotheses early on um, and having those kind of documented even for yourself uh, and, and having that in, in business speak um, will help with the communication chain um, and sometimes help dri drive change as you're going. So uh, if you're an incident responder, you don't really want to wait until the report to say, hey, you know, um, we saw that you had uh, RDP exposed to the internet, um, you know, four weeks ago. Um, here's the report. Like, as soon as you notice, say, hey, maybe we should maybe shut this down. Uh, and here's why. And so making sure that you have your hypothesis, even if it's not, like, you haven't proven that's how somebody got in. If you notice it, see something, say something. Um, your findings should have executive summaries. Um, and then uh, cost analysis or impact analysis, risk analysis, all of these things to make better or change. 
And I don't ever say fix. I really don't think that security is ever fixed, um, but we do make it better. So, um, blue team. So, uh, many of you should recognize the chain at the top. Uh, it might have triggered many of you on a ticket. Uh, and the, the trigger words come in at the very end there. Um, if false positive, we should tune it. If true positive, we should prevent it, right? Um, you would think that that's just, you know, what, what we do. No, uh, so review and closed ends up happening a lot when those two steps aren't taken. Either something is not tuned, so your tools aren't tuned, or um, preventative measures haven't been taken. You have a, someone on the management team who doesn't want to block for some reason. Um, somebody on your management team is worried about blocking legitimate traffic, a legitimate client, a legitimate service, um, or, you know, some firewalls don't actually show you their rules. Uh, a couple do, some don't share, you know, the, the, the behind the scenes, behind the, the green screen. Um, and so tuning that can be a little bit of a pain. Um, driving change through doing packet capture, it takes time uh, and, and analysis and further analysis to tune. Um, so. The beating my head against the wall that happened here uh, was months and months where I was working IR and my SOC was seeing the same tickets. Um, and I can't tell you how many times I heard, if I see one more of these uh, insert funny malware here, uh, I'm going to jump off the building. And uh, I, was, I was fearful for my SOC because I really think that they were about to. Um, they would see the same attack every day, spend a lot of time on it. They weren't spending time doing other analysis. They had no time to do threat hunting, um, and it was clogging up the whole chain of events. So metrics for your C-level, um, how much average time is being taken to remediate these things where we're not tuning them and we're not preventing them? So if they don't want to block things, if they don't want to tune the firewall, if they don't want to, if they don't want to look at the WAF and they don't want to, they don't want to bother other teams that aren't under them, you know, what, what's the cost of it? Um, you know, and, and not just to your team, so the, the cost to the associates you're paying for, but what's the cost of missing everything else that they're not looking at at that time? Okay, what's, what's the cost of, um, you know, maintaining a solution that maybe isn't, it's got defaults on? What, what aren't we looking at? So... It's like boiling hot. Did you sit on this? <sighs> you would. When are you talking next? <laughs> So terrible. <laughs> Hold on. I'm Scottish, but nobody should be able to do that in one go. Um, God. I hate you so much. I know. You know what? This is like a fine whiskey. We're going to sip the rest of this. Um, <laughs> Do that to your C-level and tell them that if they don't change the thing, that there's more where that came from because nobody will ever, like, say no to you again. Um, no, so um, the, the risk of impact and change is reiterated. Hold on. <laughs> this is great. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so if change did not change, you're still going to do over-unders. Um, and making it something that they can understand and, and really um, taking your sock away from threat hunting from for something that can be fixed is very, very costly. Um, and that's how you get external consultants like me in your environment doing IRs, and you should never, ever want to see me again. Um, all right. And then alternative solutions and costs. That's actually really important, and I put that there for a reason, and I got distracted. Okay, so um, who works in an environment where you have machines, say Windows XP, 
where you cannot patch them for whatever reason. Yay! I know you people. I felt your pain. You can't patch them. You can't because of some proprietary software and everybody screams about it all day long of just patch it. No, you can't do that. Uh, you can hit like a port on them and turn it off for seven days and nobody knows how because it's in a foreign language. Like, you don't know like how it works. You probably can't touch the machine. So getting a creative alternative solution, doing net flow, doing something to where you're putting out uh, sinkholes for something, um, get some pies in your environment and do testing. Like, what's the cost of alternative solutions? Um, and kind of present that as well. All right, um, so reporting. This is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, I'm, I'm a masochist. Uh, so uh, to gain C-level approval for solutions, um, I think it's really important to provide, even if you're just blue or if you're just red, to provide both considerations. Um, we should be feeding each other. It shouldn't just be one side or the other. I think gone are the days where we're either red or blue. Um, we really need a hybrid, otherwise we're missing stuff in between. Um, so doing risk assessments, um, looking at the staffing and budget to, to implement solutions. Um, what is the staffing and budget if an, a solution is not implemented? Okay, so um, what that means is kind of what I just said about, um, you know, if, if the worst case scenario happens and you talk to your disaster recovery folks, do you have the staff uh, to respond very quickly to a bad incident and what is your downtime going to cost you? Um, and then how much does the average external DFIR team or team member cost? Um, so looking at that and using that to kind of like drive your your uh, your solution and the, and the reason behind it. Um, and then um, taking that and putting it in a way that's kind of more businessy and boring for them. They love it. Um, I also kind of love it. Uh, so I like flowcharts. Um, I used to be a project manager. I'm very big in Agile Scrum. Not as big on Gantt charts because things can go wrong. This is something called Waterfall. Um, I made fun of it. Uh, I stole this meme. This is the one that I didn't make. Very much stole it. Liked it a lot. Um, analyze, plan, execute, rebaseline, execute, rebaseline, execute, cold slap of reality, switch to Agile method, finish project very, very late, pretend you can avoid this next time you can. Uh, so um, a lot of the, the visuals that come with this is providing them a workflow and a chart or, or a timeline, something that shows this is, I've already thought about this, we've done the assessment, this is where you can just present this, here, take this, this is, this is exactly what your solution is. And you're basically handing it off in, in such a way that they now have leverage to argue for your time um, and the thing that you want to do. Um, and it's, it's, when you present something like this, it's not just arguing to them um, because it's, there's so many other considerations. It's not like C-levels want to say no to you. Um, so giving them the ammunition to where it's easy for them to get agreement and buy-in from either laterally from the rest of the C-suite, from um, the board, from whoever else is above them um, is, is super important. And the more ammunition you give them in different forms, um, the better off you are, and this is this is where actually red and blue has to unfortunately become special specialists in project management as well, because that's really what we're suggesting. Um, whenever we find something, is a new project to fix whatever we found, or to continue going forward in a better way. Um, in closing, and I, oh wow, I went quick. Hold on, let me drink the rest of this. <coughs> Yes, you probably should. Here. You know what? You should just have the rest. There you go. Yes! <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is the thing that happens. Okay. Sir, how did that taste? Thank you. Thanks for that. Um, <laughs> Did you know, fun fact, you can have six NEs on a firewall uh, because a certain company who I will not mention decided that you have, so it's even, right? So five is an uneven number, right? 
So you have it configured on one side where you have address, address, and so it's your source and there's your destination. And then you have the other fields. Um, so user, service, application. There are six of them. And I always forget the sixth one because it's over on the source side and I was like, why would anybody ever do that? And it was just a slight comfort to me when I found the five that I didn't find six. Um, but it is possible. So if you ever see it, uh, tweet me about it. Um, I will send you stickers and probably like bake you cookies and a sympathy cake, like, cause that's just atrocious and you should never, never go through something like that. Um, so kind of to wrap up and I'll, I'll actually say a little bit more here, um, because I, I think it's important and there, there's strategy around this. So sea levels are people like us. Um, some of them have a very, very diverse technical background. Some of them don't. Some of them went to business school. Um, there are all walks of it. Um, and approaches to them should be as formulaic as you approach your work. Um, and the reason I say that, God, I'm going to keep like, yep, yep, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, it's terrible. Uh, and it tastes like warm, whatever the fuck that was, <laughs> like, cool, um, smeared off ice, cool. Um, so the, the reason I say it's formulaic is, um, because repeatable process is important and you're almost like doing a Pavlovian experiment with your sea level. And this is not a social engineering talk, but it almost should be um, because if you find out what works for them, it's going to work again. So if you find out the graph or chart they like, if you find out the bullet points they like, the style that they like your email, like do research on it. When do you get the yes? How much did you include? How much did you have to include? Don't overwork yourself. Work smarter, not harder. Um, and so create a formula and a plan of attack. Um, make sure that you are feeding your other team members because uh, we're all important. Um, you know, blue couldn't exist without red. Red couldn't exist without blue. Um, you know, and, and none of us could, we would all be screaming uh, if we didn't have our, our engineers um, for our firewalls and, and what have you. And they also drive, make friends with them. They also drive like, you know, equipment purchases and stuff like that. So, um, you know, make sure that you're 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 coming together um, and you're you're kind of testing out this idea of um, how am I going to communicate to them and including everything in it. Um, do something in a business document. Uh, make it a PDF. Make it pretty. People like pretty things. Um, you know, it's uh, we all put stickers on our laptops. You know, so kind of do it like that. Um, be tenacious about it. So metric your failures to create wins. Um, and that's something with the how many tickets am I working on this, the same stuff that we're not tuning. Um, where are we getting a pushback on like, hey, I have a firewall and it's collecting PCAPs on the same infrastructure that it's running on. I really want to have a NAS that I point this to, but I've been told no. Okay, so document what you're not seeing and then what you have to do to get around that. And, and, and like, do, do a research study on whatever that failure, whatever impact that failure has, and then present it later. Uh, a no is not necessarily a, a permanent no when it comes to making security better. Um, so be tenacious about it. That said, you can't win them all. Um, if you could, none of us would have ever switched jobs. We'd be so happy, and uh, we'd still be in the same environments we started in. So know when to walk away. Um, if you're in an environment that isn't listening to the solutions you're giving and you're following all of this advice and you're providing charts and you're providing risk analysis and impact, and I really mean doing your best. This isn't just like, hey, I told them that maybe we shouldn't have five ennies on our firewall and they just didn't get it. And, you know, so, so go above and beyond a little bit. But if you're still getting that pushback and you know that your environment is a raging dumpster fire, uh, don't put your name on that. Like, don't continue to torture yourself. Uh, talk to the people around you in the industry and see if you can't make it better, where can you go to affect change and get the fulfillment you need out of your career? Because we all do this because we love it. Um, and then no matter what, uh, make memes, share laughs, never stop loving what you do. It's so important. Like, don't get burnt out. Um, you know, we're, we're not good at what we do when we don't care. Um, so if you find yourself that you've, you've stopped caring and you're getting too many failures, definitely move on and reach out to this community, everybody in this room, 
um, reach out to them because they care just as, as much to buy a ticket, come out to DerbyCon, and spend a weekend not talking about, like, no, we're not at Disneyland. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking about technical things. We're talking about work. So um, never stop. Um, and that's pretty much it. I included for everybody um, a how-to for Gantt charts if you choose to torture yourself with this. It is very effective for road mapping, um, but it is a little bit of self-torture. Um, <clears throat> my slides were designed by my best friend in Florida. I am Florida woman. Uh, meme review and generation. Thank you to so many people in this room um, who I either stole from or who helped out in uh, curating. Uh, and then um, I really, really wanted to dedicate this to my Dallas Hackers family, who's in this front row right here. If you don't have a hacker family, come see these folks in the front row and move to Dallas. They're great. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes. It's a big question. Um, yes. Okay, so Danny asked, can I talk to you? Sure. Uh, <laughs> you use your name on Twitter. <laughs> Danny asked, who's sitting right here in the front row, if you want to come talk to him afterwards, uh, when, is, <laughs> when is the time, he also fed me a blazing hot ice, so whatever, I'm going to do what I want. Um, he asked if there was a time, if I had a story of when I absolutely met complete resistance from the sea level, um, just feet in the ground, and what I did to change their minds, and if anything actually worked. Um, I'm trying to think of, of one that's that's really solid. Um, it's, it's, probably, it's probably that endpoint one that I said was the hill I was going to die on. Um, so, had a I had an organization that was very much tied to the the product they were using and in love with it and had drunk all the Kool Aid, um, and they were so afraid of network downtime that they wouldn't monitor or tune their network. Um, they were letting everything get detected on endpoint, and so I tried to point out, listen. No product is a silver bullet. Stuff can get around it. Um, and once you're through the network, that's already a breach. Like, they're, they're in. Like, something has come in. Even if it's a script, even if it's a fish, something's dropped down. You know, that's something entering your environment that shouldn't be there. Um, so consider it that way. Bad shit's already happening. Um, I kept getting pushed back, like, what's going to happen to the business? Um, so... The way I affected change is I went, okay, stuff's not going to happen at the macro level. So let's affect the micro level. So I found uh, that the firewalls were configured to default um, on a specific kind of firewall that I shall not mention um, to send a reset flag instead of drop when it was blocking. Um, so it was waving and saying hello to anybody that sent an attack and saying, hey, there, there is a server here. You should keep trying. And so I took, I took one IP address that I was like, oh, uh, this is from a country uh, you know, that probably doesn't like us very much. And uh, it looks pretty obviously malicious. So, and they were trying China Chopper. So I was like, oh, OK, this is easy. I was like, what happened when we sent the reset flag? And I saw a Christmas tree of like attacks right after it. And I was like, Here's my point that I'm going to prove. And so I wrote a report, and I was very proud of this report. And do you know what happened? I got that one IP blocked, and it felt so good. <laughs> so that's about it. So if you can't affect the big, go small, and like just, just take little ones and be positive about it. Um, but, but that's really it. Does anybody have any other questions? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so default was turned on, so it was good. Uh, we did have logs to look at. However, um, it also comes with either uh, 
single or partial, or single or, or multi-packet capture, and that was turned off. So can't can't have it all. Anything else? So, first, I go to the bar, um, <laughs> and uh, no, I, uh, so when I, I, I did not fully procrastinate, um, I had all of this outlined in writing before I did any of it, um, and so um, when I generate my memes, I, I, I'm going to answer this like it's a serious question because I have a belly full of ice and it's terrible. Um, I, I, I actually just sit around with friends and uh, I say, hey, have you ever seen something this terrible? There's probably a meme for that. We should make one. And like that's legitimately how we generate memes. And actually, I want to go back to one. Um, so if I can get there. Ah, this one. Hold on. Wait. Nope. This. This is not mine. Um, this is somebody I, I used to work with. Um, and this is the pain we felt. This is an old meme. Like we've we've had this around for a while, and uh, it is is a it was a Friday, um, after hours, and so like memes just happen, and that's why kind of one of the encouraging factors of of being here at DerbyCon and and with a bunch of friends is like just you know sit around and do stuff like this. It's it's great. <laughs>